Hi, this is Matt Skinner with a special announcement. Starting this Wednesday, May 17th, every dollar to the Working Preacher Spring Campaign will be matched dollar for dollar up to $10,000. And don't forget about the additional Sermon Brainwave content that your gift will unlock. Working Preacher relies on people like you to provide new content every week. Be sure to make your gift before May 31st to double your impact and unlock your additional content at workingpreacher.org. We are so grateful to each and every one of you who has given generously already. Thank you. Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And I'm Christopher Van Kaufman. And today we're talking about the Narrative Lectionary for May 21st, 2023. We are moving on to Romans chapter 6, 1 through 14. And here Paul is going from, in some ways, the theoretical portion of his argument to talking about what does this actually mean for us as believers in Jesus? How do these things, these concepts we've been talking about, the, the idea that God is God for everyone, the idea that we are reconciled to God through the death of Jesus Christ, the idea that we are justified by faith, how does this affect our lives? And he does this, it really starts this in verse 5, excuse me, in verse 4, by talking about the way in which the actions of Jesus are the story of our lives as well. That it is that through baptism, we also die and are crucified with Christ. And just like Christ, we will be raised with him. And so again, this is where Paul goes from, here's these theoretical things, here's what it means for your life as well. And what it means is death, crucifixion, and resurrection. And there's a wonderful little uh, translation thing going on too in five. That's why I had five in my head was I wanted to talk about it. And it's not a bad translation in six, five, for if we have been united with him. But the word in Greek means to be planted together with or to grow together with. And I love this idea. Again, it is though as though we are grafted onto the work of Jesus on Again, this the idea of thinking of the cross as a tree, that we are grafted onto the tree that is the cross. And so that's just a, a nifty little uh, nod from Paul to that tree language there. I was going to jump in with that first part that you kind of um, uh, gloss through. Uh, you, were, you were getting to the payoff, but uh, the oh, yeah. setup, the <laughs> setup, what then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? This is the great fear of, frankly, a lot of Christians who don't like the Pauline take on the gospel. Well, if that's true, why don't you then just, right? Uh, and my old colleague, uh, Phil Kwan, back at Augsburg College, uh, had two takes on this, right? The, the translated uh, the me agenito or, or uh, me genoito uh, for translated by no means. Phil used to translate hell no. <laughs> um, that it's simply not possible if you have been grasped by the love of Christ to do that. And the great movie, American movie, that's a commentary on this uh, for my friend Phil was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> His sister is so worried that Ferris, who has understood the freedom of justification, gets away with everything, right? And finally, at the end, I love it where she's, she then, of course, skip school to try to catch her brother. She's the one that gets arrested. And then she's sitting there and uh, Charlie Sheen says to her, what's your problem? And she says, I hate my brother. <laughs> 
And he goes, I know what your problem is. You need to quit worrying a little bit less about your brother and a little bit more about yourself. And there's something about the gospel that turns us away from worrying about other people's sins. Um, most people that say to me or to others, I think we need more law in the sermon. Really what they mean is I think my neighbor needs more law and I know exactly what it is that she needs to hear. Right? So the gospel turns us away from worrying about our neighbor's sins. And even then from realizing our own are forgiven so that, like you said, we are then uh, freed to live uh, at, at, in this beautiful phrase, so that we too might walk in newness of life. That becomes, I appreciate that reminder of that film. Uh, <laughs> uh, that becomes a bit of the um, disruption that makes the gospel good news in a fallen world. Uh, if by no means we are going to continue in the brokenness, uh, continue, uh, uh, I rewrote the list uh, um, of that which um, has dominion over us. Um, uh, and the list I wrote was contempt, vengeance, hatred, mistrust dishonesty, immorality, whether sexual or ethical, gossip, greed, coveting, fame, forcefulness, or fortune. When we start thinking about those things that become what drive us in a way where we no longer are concerned about how it is detrimental to our neighbor or to our sibling. Then we become the people who are saying, yeah, but our sibling's doing it worse than I am. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but if, if we're beginning to say no, because of God showing up, and a few weeks ago, as we, as we were finishing out Acts, I asked the question, you know, where have you seen God show up in a transforming way? And every once in a while, we have the opportunity of seeing God show up in our neighbor. And we wonder there's something different about you. Your attitude has changed. Your character has changed. And that's worth naming, that that's the work of the Holy Spirit and evidence that God has shown up and transformed your life. And for that, I'm grateful that he could conquer death, even the death that is destroying my character. Oh. Well, <laughs> Amen. I, I really appreciate that all of that. And I appreciate it so much. And this goes with that walking in newness of life for all, because so much of what, uh, you know, we all live in the United States in 2023 in the state of Minnesota. And so much of what American culture sells right now is self-improvement. And this idea that if you just do this or buy this or just a little bit more, you'll finally get over all these things. One more purchase, one more class, one more this one will more get you over the hump. Yep. And what Paul says is the only way out of it is death. Same. That dying with Christ is the only way out. And that is when new life begins. And that's how you escape all these things that you listed there. Whereas when we try this self-help approach, when we try this personal betterment approach, all those things keep their claws in us. And so this, I think, yeah, I think that's, you just put it so beautifully, the way in which Christ's conquering of death gets us away from all those things. Hallelujah.